you guys to go ahead uh, share the video on your page let's get more people connected uh, at this point in time and as you're coming in i'm going to be shouting i'm going to give you uh, shout outs to you guys just to appreciate every one of you guys but please go ahead and share the video right on your page let's get more people connected all right I can see a whole lot of guys coming in. Uh, my fans out there, you guys are coming in right this moment. Uh, God bless you very much. Uh, Princess uh, Adidero, thank you very much. Kemi, uh, Shoka, thank you very much for coming on the show. Favor, favor. Favor, Ojabo. Gloria, Keora. God bless you. Polasha, Day, Odusi. God bless you. Celine, Roland, God bless you. Mercy, Adebo Ali, God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, Kazin, Omo Yemen. God bless you, Adiola Omoba. God bless you, Fumita Labi. Thank you very much, everybody, as you're coming in on the show with me. At this time, let's go ahead and share the video. Share it on your page. Let's get more people connected um, at this time. I believe you guys, you are able to hear me. If you can hear me, come on, just let me know out there that you are able to hear me uh, so that we won't just be talking uh, just to waste time. God bless you. We ask of you one thing that we desire. And as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. One thing we ask of you, from our heart, one thing that we desire. And as we worship you, I can spot global activity. I can spot near on me. How are you guys doing, man? You know, it's a wonderful morning. God bless you. Thank you very much. Shola Telu will join you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Lubumi. Ogunkwa. God bless you. Modu. Modupsi. Akimbolaji. God bless you. Thank you very much. Omotu De Anjori. Angel Olufemi. Innocent. Awolu. God bless you. Adenike. Fashawel. God bless you. Joan. Amunuru. God bless you. Yinka Elliot. How are you doing today? Sing all right, real quick before we, we, we you know, you know, because we, we, because of time, uh, let's get to let's get to work real quick. Let's get to work real quick. Uh, we have a very long way to go this morning, and uh, <clears throat> I believe we are all going to be greatly blessed this morning by the grace of God. And uh, I pray that the Almighty Father will give us brand new testimonies and brand new miracles will come to us uh, this year, 2020, and especially uh, this month of January. Uh, 2020 in the name of jesus this morning you will not uh, miss the grace of god you will not miss the mercy of god and you will not miss the miracle that god has ordained to happen in your life this morning in jesus name so i want you guys to be rest assured that today is already settled and uh, the lord god almighty has finished everything concerning your life this morning you are protected you're going to be guided the lord god almighty will protect your children your husband your wife wherever they may be uh, no disaster will befall you in the mighty name of Jesus. You'll continue to enjoy 
the benefit of God. You will eat the best of the harvest this morning in Jesus' name. If you are the one I'm talking about, shout a big amen. And let's get to business in the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me just quickly just give you guys update. Update as per uh, the assignment that was given to me a few days ago as per the woman who uh, had an encounter with the prophet in Dallas. Uh, she got uh, she got pregnant and uh, she gave birth to a baby boy and that boy is 11 years old at this time and the woman just suddenly woke up after 11 years uh, in stop and now searching for the prophet and at the same time trying to fight for her life. Glory be to the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that I was able to connect with the woman and then we, uh, I got the phone number to the family of the man who died 11 years ago, about, yeah, about 10 years ago, uh, who died about 10 years ago. And uh, I was able to discuss with his sister and we talked and talked and talked about the old stuff and uh, she took it well and uh, she's expecting me to call back today to talk to somebody in Onicha. I'm going to be talking to somebody uh, in Onicha today uh, to be able to explain better <clears throat> by the grace of God. And uh, right after we are, be, we are able to settle the issue about the family, we are now going to continue to pray for that lady. I'm going to connect with some pastors who are into deliverance ministry. <laughs> you know me. My own deliverance is actually slapping you, Rema. I slap you, Rema, from the beginning so that you won't fall into a problem. But if you are falling into a problem, it's not my duty. I am not called to come and do it. No. All right? <laughs> so my own is to deliver you before all problem. So I'm going to actually connect. Thank you, Daddy Babi God bless you, sir. I'm going to connect you. I'm going to connect out with those ones who have been called into that ministry to uh, actually run deliver. Uh, they are actually running deliverance ministry, and they can actually help us out as per that lady. So, glory be to God. We have been able to break the uh, the news to the sister of that man, and I'll be able to break the news to the sister of that man. And my advice is this: Listen, I believe one thing. You guys may not believe it. The prophet didn't sleep with that woman with the intention to have a kid. No. The prophet didn't sleep with that woman with the intention to get her pregnant. Uh, he slept with that woman uh, with the mind to use the woman, not knowing that the woman will get pregnant. Now, that man is not coming back. Even if he's coming back, he's only coming back to collect money. So I told the sister, I said, listen, all right, you don't have to worry. You don't have to run around. That child is still yours. That boy still belongs to your family. You guys have been taking care of this boy from day one. Just continue taking care of him and let the devil be put to shame. Uh, we don't want to break the spirit of that young boy. We don't want to break his spirit. And at the same time, we want to protect the woman also. So listen, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Just let it be. Continue taking care of that kid. Continue doing whatever it is that God has called you to do for that kid. Continue doing it for, for him. And let's train that kid the way of the way of the Lord. And uh, at the end of the day, we all are going to celebrate when the boy will come out to be a good person in life. So we've been able to do that. So I'm waiting to talk to the uh, elder brother who is in Onicha uh, today, sometimes today, uh, by the grace of God. So this is where God has helped us to get to. And uh, we're going to continue to do whatever God has asked us to do as far as these people, by the grace of God. I come to understand one fact that I actually know the prophet we're talking about. The name has been given unto me. I actually know the guy. <laughs> I've seen the guy like many times on Facebook, but I just suddenly found out that the page, the Facebook page was teared down. I went to the page uh, yesterday. I was trying to check if the page is still available, but the page has been removed. I know the guy. I, I have seen him you know, a couple of times on, I mean, of times on, uh, on, 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 on Facebook. On Facebook, but they remove his page. The page is no more there at this point in time. All right. So that's the update at this moment. That's the update at this moment. The second thing I want to quickly just do is to I, I want to advertise this uh, movie here. Uh, this movie. I want to advertise this movie uh, that is coming out uh, by the grace of God. Uh, this is a new movie coming out uh, by God's grace, and uh, by Thursday, January the 9th. It's going to be showing all over Nigeria, okay? You're going to be able to see it, uh, this movie. And it's coming on social media also. You're going to be able to see this movie uh, on, uh, you're going to see it on, on YouTube uh, by the grace of God. So take, you know, just 
cram that particular name. The name is uh, uh, Greek. All right. So that's the movie right now. Movie for this week uh, by the grace of God. Now, uh, if you're out there, you want to advertise your, you want to advertise your movie. You want to advertise your event, your church event. You want to advertise uh, your products. Feel free to see me because we have a segment right now where we're going to be advertising companies, advertising churches, advertising programs and movies and all that kind of stuff. So watch out for that movie. It's coming on YouTube very soon uh, by the grace of God. So today, uh, we are going to be discussing something very important. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes I feel like, what exactly am I doing in Nigerian community? You know, sometimes I kind of wonder, what exactly am I doing here? Why am I here? You know, why am I actually a Nigerian? All right. You know, sometimes I just feel so ashamed of myself being a Nigerian. To call myself a Nigerian is not that kind of an easy thing anymore for me. It's not an easy thing for me anymore. All right? So, because I wonder, okay, I just wonder sometimes what exactly is wrong with us? What exactly is in our brain? You know, and so far, and God has given us this brain that we know a lot of things. We are very brilliant people. We are very intelligent people. But it's just that, it's just that, I, sh I should repeat the movie. Okay, I will. I will definitely do that. You know, we should. Uh, you know, we we, we should. Uh, 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 you know, just be able to use our brain to be able to think and to and to coordinate things. You know, we're very very intelligent people. How come we are just still living the way we're living? It, it's kind of like a little surprise. You know, you know, for me, I, I'm not able to put it together. Praise God. So uh, I was I, I, I was inside my house and I was thinking about people. You know, there are people that have lost hope, and, and you will not believe it. Uh, people that have lost hope, uh, they are hopeless right now because so many things have you know gone through their lives. You know, people who are single mothers today, they are not. It's not like they are happy to be single mothers. Somebody made them to be single mothers. Somebody used the banana on them. You see, I don't want to start this stuff right in the middle, I mean, in the beginning of this whole show, all right? I want to be serious today. I, I try to be serious, but listen, somebody used their banana on the women, all right? The women didn't just get pregnant by themselves. They passed through so much, all kinds of stuff like that. Relationship have come up. You guys have been into one relationship or the other. You've enjoyed the moment here and there and all kinds of stuff. And at the end of the whole stuff, you look at those people, they don't have hope anymore. The guys have gone. The people who made them to be single mothers left them. The owners of the babies left them. They abandoned their home that they're gone. All right? And, and, and their own story is that the women are bad. The women are they're no good. Oh, this woman is not respectful. Oh, this woman is arrogant. This woman is crazy. Oh, you knew that the woman is arrogant and crazy before you stick it into her. Before, be, before you, before you enter into the into the kanga, you enter into the kanga, and, and you you have seen the character, you have seen the way she reacted to her parents, you have seen the way she's reacting to her friend, you have seen the way she's reacting to you, and so, but you still went ahead to actually make her to be a mother, and then you abandon her and you and you run away. Now, I sat down on my couch and I started looking at people that are hopeless, you know, people that are. Actually, so sad. Many of them are depressed because now they are. Because now, because the issue is that because you are, you are, you are sitting down. I mean, I'm sitting down there, I'm thinking about them. They're depressed. They're not happy. They have so much going on inside of them. All right, because they are taking care of. They are taking care of the children all by themselves. They are actually working all by themselves. All by themselves, they are running from one pillar to pole, trying to make ends to meet. They are the fathers in the home. They are the mothers in the home and all kinds of stuff. You know, all kinds of stuff. So at the end of the whole stuff, at the end of the whole stuff, they have been abandoned by the man who made them to be mothers. They have been abandoned most of the time by the church. Abandoned by the church. Okay, the church will abandon them too. We, you know, the, the, the religion or, or Christianity of Nigeria is actually, I, I don't understand, it's upside down. The people we are supposed to be catering for are the people that we push outside. The ones that we're supposed to be praying for, those are the ones that we push outside. 
The ones that we're supposed to be hugging and loving, those are the ones that we push outside. And we use those ones. The ones that we are pushing outside, those are the ones that we go to collect money from. Those are the ones that we cajole. Those are the ones that we lie to. And we're going to begin saying, say, his powers and principality is one witch or one wizard. He's from your mother's side. He's from your father's side. We are supposed to help them out, but we are not helping them. Now, I posted something this morning. It's very challenging and difficult to be a Christian now. Because all we are seeing now in Nigerian churches is all about teaching theology, rules and regulation, doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. Whereas people are dying. People are dying inside of the church. Many people are walking away from God because they get disappointed and they walk away. And we don't feel concerned. We, don't, we are not bothered at all by this. You see, what, what is making people to become single mothers? Have we, have, we, have, we, have we taken our time to look into the life of people? Why are they single mothers? Now, looking at the whole system, you find out that the single mothers are even much more than the married people. The single mothers. There are much more. There are many more than the married people. And let me tell you this. There are so many people out there that are still planning to be divorced. Or there are still so many people over there that are still planning to walk away from their relationship. Because the relationship is just not working. Alright? What exactly is the church doing about the people that have been wounded? Okay? What is, what is the church doing about the ones that have been hurt? Okay? Now, let, let's say oh, there are some crazy women. Do you think every woman is crazy? Don't you believe that there are some men that actually took advantage of these young ladies, got them pregnant and ran away? Okay? What is the church doing about them? Okay? Are we trying to protect those ones that have been hurt? Are we trying to, are we, what are we doing to start, to try to restore them back for so that they can stand? What exactly is the church doing to help them to take care of their children? All right? What is the church doing? What exactly is the plan of we Christians to be able to love them and make them smile again? What exactly is, are we doing? Now, the next thing that we see, because I actually create, I created a post and I, I, put, I posted it on social media and everybody was liking it, thanking me and I prayed for them. And I said, single mothers, God is going to set to you this year, 2020. And they were saying, amen, amen, amen. And some stupid people, some crazy people, okay? You know, I, I don't know where they're from, man. And they started sending all manners of things. Stop advertising these people. They're crazy people. They're stupid. Single mothers are demons. Now, I don't understand where you are getting all of this stuff, all of this kind of stuff from. You are a wicked soul. You know, wicked people will think like that. Now, let me start from this angle so that you will all understand. There is no sin. There is no sin. That the Holy Spirit cannot forgive except the sin against the Holy Spirit. All right? Now, it doesn't matter what those women have done. I personally do not care. I do not want to know what they have done, what they've gone through, or whatever. I do not want to care. And I'm going to base my judgment on the life of Christ. I am going to say the same thing that Jesus Christ will say. I am not going to say anything that... I'm going to say on, on a normal level because I am not supposed to judge any man. All right? I am supposed to look at people the way Christ will look at people. All right? That's the way I'm going to look at people. All right? That's what I'm going to do. Now, the situation is that all of these women we're talking about, oh, they are women, oh, they are, uh, they are, they are crazy women, oh, they are single mothers, they are stupid, they are demons, they are all kinds of stuff. All right? They are human beings like every one of us. All right? They're human beings like every one of us. All right? Now, they didn't enter into that relationship at that point in time with the mindset of becoming a single mother. No. They didn't have... That wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't their plan. It wasn't in their plan for them to actually now just have sexual relationship with this brother. Let this brother just bang me. Bang me left and right. Okay? Bang me in and out. Okay? And, and let him shake. And let me say... ah, And let me say... Give it to me just because I want to be pregnant and then for him to walk away. No, that wasn't their plan. They didn't plan it like that. That wasn't how they wanted it. They didn't pray for it to be like that. There are some stupid men that do that uh, uh, always go all around sleeping with women all around the place that do not have brain. They have salt and water in their head. They have salt and water in their head. If you want to commit adultery, 
or you want to commit fornication, you have to understand that it's possible for babies to occur. Okay? Then you use condom. And, and as a Christian, are you supposed to be doing that anyway? Are you supposed to be jumping all around the place anyway? All right? I, I'm not going to blame you too, but I'm going to blame the women that are opening their labs to you when you're actually bringing a stupid, a stupid banana that will ruin their lives. But they will not know that time that the banana will ruin their life. He couldn't jog it. He couldn't read it. They will believe that, oh, this is actually an enjoyment, or probably this guy is going to marry me. Then stop. You see, women go by what you tell them. Women, they go by what you tell them. If you tell them, hey, I love you, they believe you, they start thinking about it in their head. They start thinking about it inside of their head. Oh, this guy is in love with me. Then many of our women believe that when I give him sex, then automatically he's going to marry me. When I'm good in bed, automatically he's going to marry me. Now, that's the mistake of women. You can't tie a man down with sex. You cannot use sex to tie a man down. It's never going to work. That's not the way things work. All right? Men don't get tied down with sex. That is why we have a lot of single mothers all around, single mothers without marriage. I'm not talking about the ones that are divorcees. There are divorcees that have become single mothers, and there are single ladies that have never been married before, but they are. They are, sing, they are single mothers because they have children. No, they still have their children. So the issue now is this. Now, women go by what they listen to. Men come there to cajole them. They talk nice. They say all manners of nice things just because these women look beautiful. They look very sexy. They are well endowed and stuff like that. I was hearing one man was saying, Ah, what do Yeah. They will say, put Jesus Christ there. They say, yeah, 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 set by there. And so, and these people that are saying this, this man is a married man. And you're looking at another person and looking at the body of that person. That was when I come to understand that people are all only after the physical look, they're after the body part. They don't care what is on the inside. They don't care what will happen right after. They just jump on it because they see the breast big. They see the backyard. They see all manners of things. So they jump on it. At the end of the day, their brain is not thinking at that time. They are thinking with their penis. They are only thinking with their banana. And then the banana will always mislead you. You will always make a wrong choice by thinking with your banana. Banana is not a good guy. He doesn't think correctly. Banana's thinking is only in and out. That's all banana think about. Banana can't think about what will happen after I'm in and out. Banana don't think about child support. Banana don't think about uh, school fees. Banana don't think about ridicule. Banana don't think about anything. Banana only think about in and out. And that's what banana think about. It's only your brain here that can think about that before you now control your banana and say, banana, it's time to do the job. So the banana must not do the job until your head will dissect and construct and be able to break down information and tell your banana, I don't have time for Thai support yet. I don't have time to send a kid to school. I don't have time to be ridiculed yet because I'm married. So banana, stay where you are. You know, stay where you are. That's the way, that's the one, that's the way it's gonna work. It's never gonna work by you just allowing the banana to take over your life and start thinking for you. All right. At that point in time, you won't understand what is coming. Oh, He is actually going to create trouble. All right. So hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you this real quick. You see, that's the side of the of the that's for the side of the man. There are some women too. These women are actually, they are gold diggers. The women are gold diggers. They have children for five different people. Five different people, they will just have sex with this person. They get pregnant. They have a child. They have sex with that one. They get pregnant. They have a child. All because they want to collect child support from five different people. And then they sit at home. They drive a Mercedes Benz. They have a house. And they just roam around the street enjoying themselves. All right? So that won't happen to you because if you have self control, if you have self control, no woman will come over. Come along, come along. They deal with one. 
I am pregnant, Joe, Mr. Dimitri. What's the name? I'm like, 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 i i am like i i am i am i the issue is this, there are crazy people and there are good people. You cannot say everybody is crazy. You cannot say all single mothers are bad. Even though, we don't know who to trust, who not to trust. It's just like the issue of pastors. We will say all oh, pastors are team. We don't know who is the good one. We don't know who is the bad one. I always tell people this. I say, don't be saying Olorun Shola Adi Oye. If you say Olorun Shola Adi, you don't know the God I'm serving. You don't know. You don't know maybe I put Betu Betu in my pocket. You don't know. You don't have any understanding. If I told you and you're falling down and you think it's just ordinary, it is not ordinary. Don't be saying that. It is better for you to know yourself. That's why the Bible says, they who know their God. Know your own God. Don't be knowing the God of Asosola. You don't know maybe I'm actually worshipping the real God. Maybe I actually have an idol in the corner of my room that I'm worshipping. You don't know even, maybe I have Bante in my pocket. You, you, you don't know. You don't know maybe I have Olonde around my waist. You don't even know maybe I have belly all over my body. You don't even know. You don't understand. So you need to know your God. Know your God and serve your God. So when we say women are bad, not all women are bad. When we say pastors are bad, not all pastors are bad. When we say single mothers are crazy, we cannot say all single mothers are crazy. All right? So what is the fact? The fact is this. All right? The fact is this. Now, people become single mothers because of past mistakes. Because of past mistakes. I, I personally, I, I want to quickly just uh, celebrate the single mothers out there. I celebrate you guys. Uh, come on. Uh, come on. I celebrate you guys. I, I don't care if you have made mistakes. I don't care if you have fallen before. I don't, I don't care even if you are still making the mistake right now, but I celebrate you. I, I thank God on your behalf. Um, your mistake can be rectified. I thank God that you are taking care of that child that God has given unto you. I thank God for that one. All right? The Lord God Almighty will continue to be with you, bless you, empower you, and give you more grace. And I pray that this year, 2020, the Lord will share to you, the Lord will enlarge your coast, enlarge your territory, whatever it is that you're praying for, the Lord will do for you. And as I'm praying for the single mothers, I'm praying for the single fathers too. But even though the single fathers don't keep children, and when you have a you want salon. So the single fathers, they just run away after talking about the pump where my pump where you can go back, you can down. I pray for you too. The Lord God Almighty will bring you back home. If you are meant to come back home, you will reset your button in your head and come back home. And come back home. So, you know, whatever it is that they have made. Okay, the, the mistake I'm talking about is sleeping with a boy instead of looking for a real man. The mistake I see is for them actually allowing you to sleep with them without thinking very well. Understand that they know that you are a liar. You don't know that. The mistake is that they are not, they didn't ask from God. They didn't inquire from God. Who is this person? Who is this person? Is this person the real person or not? You know, and all kinds of stuff. So, so that's the issue. Now, it's possible for somebody to have made mistake in the past. Mistake of, uh, you know, sleeping around. And during the time of sleeping around, she is not maybe... They got the mind to have kids or to get pregnant for a wrong person. Uh, some people, they are pregnant for a married man. Do you know a lot of married men uh, that these people, you know, they go all around, sleeping all around the place, and these people, uh, you know, they, 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 they enter into them, and now they have children through married men. And stuff. they're all over the place also. All right? You know, let's not say, okay, that mistake has happened, that you mistakenly uh, did that, and you have a son, or you have a daughter, or you have two kids uh, for the same guy. See, I am not judging you, and I will never judge you in my life. All right? Jesus Christ said to the woman that was caught in the heart of adultery, he said, go and sin no more. So I believe this is just the wake-up call for you as a single mother to actually think about it. Like, now I'm a single mother. All right? There's nothing I can do about it. That's now my status. All right? This is my status. I'm going to accept my status. 
I'm going to accept it, and I'm going to do whatever it is that will make sure that my ways are straightened and changed. All right? So the next thing you want to do is actually to now embrace yourself, understand where you are right now, think about your life. You don't want to jump from bed to bed anymore. All right? A lot of single mothers will, you know, they believe that the moment I'm not able to find a man, because it's actually very difficult for a single mother to even find love these days. Very, very difficult. The single sisters that are not that don't have kids, kids don't even have husband. They are still begging God, you know. And then you, you are after one, after two, after three. All right, it's a very difficult thing, but there's nothing impossible for God to do. We've done it many times. I, I've connected a lot of people. Even these last two weeks, I connected a woman who is uh, a single mother uh, to another person, and, and they're actually having discussion right now. And everything is going on fine. Everything is fine under control. But, but it's very, very difficult to find somebody. All right. So if you have made that mistake, you've slept with somebody you shouldn't have slept with, and now you are pregnant, and you have a son or you have a daughter, all right, the very first thing I want you to do is just to accept yourself. Good. Now, don't now look at it as a mistake. Look at it as the will of God for your life. Don't look at the old stuff as a mistake anymore. <clears throat> the child is not a mistake. Your daughter is not a mistake. Your son is not a mistake. Now look at them as the gift of God to you. God allowed it to happen. See that there is this two will of God. The permissive will of God and the perfect will of God. God can allow anything to happen. Not because he wanted it to happen. Not because that's his perfect will. But this will just happen. And then he will allow it to happen. And stuff like that. So those kids, when the, these children are not mistake. They are not mistake children. They are not mistake children. Don't see them as mistakes. They are the gift of God to your life. The father is not there. Maybe the fathers are no longer in their lives. They've gone to run away or whatever it is. Or the father is somewhere else married to another person or whatsoever. Those children, they are still a blessing to you. A blessing even to humanity. So see them like that. So whatever it is that you're doing, don't actually have, don't have bitterness towards those kids. You know, even, you know, I, I saw one woman. The woman said, I hate my son. I said, why? I said, every time I look at his face and his character, it's just exactly like his father. I was like, you don't have to hate a child because he looks like his father. You don't have to hate him because he behaves like his father. You know, that's his father. He is from that lineage. He must behave like him. But let me tell you something. That boy is not the father. The father is somewhere else. All right? So if you want to hate anybody, I think you should hate the father. Don't hate the son. So these are the, thing, these are the things that, you know, people go through. They go through all of this stuff and, and then they, they carry bitterness. In their hand, so I don't want you to see children as a mistake, or uh, maybe they are, uh, you know, they are, they are kind of a burden to you. No, they're not. All right. So I want you to keep it like that. Believe this is the will of God that God has allowed to happen in your life. So you accept that faith as a single mother. Now, people do say, "Oh, single mothers, uh, they are not allowed to operate in churches." Now, they believe that the only place you can go to uh, to get acceptance is inside of a church. I believe that myself. I believe that myself. That that's the place you should go. Because the church is a place where we have the Spirit of God, a place where we have the gathering of the children of God. You know, people that have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, people that have a regenerated heart, people that believe in praying for their enemy, people that believe in taking care of the widows and the motherless people, people that believe that I'm supposed to be my brother's keeper, you know, they are supposed to be inside of the church. So when we go to church as a single mother, we should be accepted. That's where we're supposed to be accepted. I was actually sharing yesterday. The person asked, said, what are we supposed to do with gay people when they come to our church? I said, accept them. They are supposed to be church members. And as they listen to the word of God, it is by the word of God that lives will begin to change. So if you refuse them to hear the word of God, how will they change? So when they come into your church as a gay person, let me tell you one thing. They are equal to the man that is lying in your church. The liar, the adulterer, the fornicators in your church, the thieves in your church, they are in the same category with the man that is coming who is an homose with homosexual. All right? The same category. There is no big sin. There is no small sin. There is no extended sin. There is nothing like that. Sin is sin. All right? Gay people are going to go to hell exactly the way the liars are going to go to hell. Fornicators are going to go to hell exactly the same way somebody who is a murderer will go to hell. 
A murderer will go to hell the same way that the, that the homosexual will go to hell. So when you see people who have been into sin, your own responsibility is not to condemn them. Your responsibility is to pull them to you, hug them, kiss on them, and love them because that's exactly the reason why we're being called into Christianity. We are not called into Christianity to come in and judge people that are wounded. We are not called into Christianity to judge people that are falling into sin because Jesus Christ died for their sin long time ago. The sin they have committed before, the one they are committing today, and the one that they will commit later down the road has been paid for in full. That's why in Judaism, they have to kill a ram. They have to kill a goat. They have to kill a pigeon. But in Christianity, we killed Jesus on the cross of Calvary. It became a sacrifice for our sin once and for all. So we do not need to depend upon the blood of animals anymore. We do not need to depend upon the blood of a ram anymore. We have the blood of Jesus that is still potent today, that is still wiping away all sins today, that is still making people whole today. So that's what we depend on in Christianity. So if anyone is taking you back, into Judaism, you are no longer under the law. You have been set free by the blood of Jesus, by the mercy and the grace of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So, you have received forgiveness from all sins. The one you have not committed to has been paid for. So, it's within the church that these single mothers... This is where they are supposed to receive love. And then people do say, well, single mothers, they are doomed for life. What do you mean they're doomed for life? The moment you have actually gotten to that level, you are not supposed to marry again. So you're supposed to be single the rest of your life. Nobody should marry such a kind of a person because that person will be committing sin. All right, let's not say that person marry that person. You now marry that same person. And the Bible is saying, oh, you have committed the sin. Da, 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 da. And then the blood of Jesus Christ is introduced to that particular sin. Is he not wiped off? All right. Let's just look at it like that. Then look at it in another way. The Bible didn't even say that. All right. Because a lot of you always want to say, what did the Bible say? You want to live your life based on the Bible. But yet you are not living your life based on the Bible. Now, like I said many times, that the Bible is a storybook and a book of instruction. There are stories and instructions in there that are not directed towards us. In a generation today. Okay? And then they are not instructions for Christians. They are instructions for people in Judaism. So you need to understand when you are a Christian, you are living a life in Christ. All sins are passed away. Every sin has been forgiven. All things are passed away. Behold, they are new. You are living a new life the moment you give your life to Christ. So for a single person who is not married but have a child, you are still marriageable. People should still be able to marry you. The ones that are divorced and, 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 and they're divorced and they have kids and they actually become single mothers based on that, they can remarry again. By the time you check into their lives, look at their lives. What exactly have they done wrong? Is there any sin that the Holy Ghost cannot forgive? People do lie to themselves. They say, oh, I've had sex before and now I'm, I am spiritual virgin. I am spiritual virgin. So, if you know that you can actually do that, you see Nigerians how we are, double, double, double face. Now, we believe that if you have had sex before and then you come to church and pastor will pray for you, then the blood of Jesus Christ can wipe off all the sex you've had before and you can now become a spiritual virgin. One particular lady got married to a young man, told the young man all through the journey that she has never had sex before, she is a spiritual virgin. I mean, she's a virgin. And on the day of uh, wedding, the brother was so excited to check it out. Went inside and then the guy brought out the banana, stick it into the place. The, the guy went all the way inside. Da -da! The guy just jumped out. Say what? Say what happened? Say what happened to your vagina? He said, vagina, you don't say vagina. The vagina is there. He said, but you told me you're a virgin. He said, yes, I'm a spiritual virgin. You didn't ask me the definition. You didn't ask me which one am I talking about. Okay? You didn't ask me the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about I'm a spiritual virgin. And the brother quickly ran to the pastor of the church and said, Pastor, sir, you know, you, you, you canceled us and then you asked and then the sister said, she's a virgin. In front of me, the pastor said I was the one that prayed for her. God has forgiven all the banging she has done before. Now she's a spiritual virgin. <laughs> so, so this is the stuff. 
So when we are not talking about single mothers, we don't even have ministry for them. We don't even have a class for them. We don't even have a way of actually holding them and loving on them and thanking them for still being, you know, you know, for, for, for being alive. We don't even thank them. We don't even celebrate them. We don't. We, we don't even have a class for them to see how can we put them back on their feet. All we want is just to bring some laws and some regulations out of nowhere. God hate divorce. Have to remain single. Uh, you can't marry a single mother. You are a sinner. You are a this. Nigerians, we know how to mention all those things. Holier than thou things. We know how to say all kinds of manners of things. We know how to point accusing finger against or towards other people. We know how to. We know how to say all this kind of stupid rubbish. We say all those kind of stuff and everything. But we our life, our life is not actually preaching nothing. Even you yourself, you are not standing. And that's why the Bible says, those ones that think they are standing, let them be careful. Let they fall. Let they fall. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so this, this, this whole stuff, I don't understand how, how we go by all this stuff. So for me, with my mentality and my understanding about the scripture and Christianity, Christ already finished the job for us. All right? We are now living inside of the Holy Spirit and we have been given mercy. We have been given grace. Our sin has been forgiven. He actually nailed them to the cross. And our life is now perfect because we are in Christ. I do not see a single mother to be single mothers. I'm not seeing a divorcee to be divorcee. I see them as a child of God. I see that God is working on their lives. I see them to be people, humans. I see them to be ordinary people, not, not angels. And, and uh, there's nobody that is an angel. Nobody's clean. Nobody. If God decides to mark iniquity, the Bible says no one can stand. Okay? Who are you now to now become a judge, to now begin to condemn single mothers that they are demons? Who are you to now say they are demons? All right? They, 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 they become victims sometimes. Some of them make mistakes, made mistakes. Some of them are victims of liars, scammers. And that's why they are where they are today. Some of them got married to the wrong person because of manipulation. You know, some of them, some of them are, are, are go divorced because and they walk away from their home because they want to be alive. I celebrate divorcees myself. I do celebrate them. If I divorcee out there, I celebrate you. All right, because you choose to be alive. You know, you don't understand mental abuse. Many of you don't understand physical abuse because your husband has not. Uh, you know, you've not gone through it. Many of you don't understand it. When you are going through abuse in a relationship, you don't know what people go through every day of their lives. And that's why you can run your mouth. You're running your mouth like a book. You know, talking all manners of things. You can quote all manners of scriptures. Um, you know, all manners of scriptures and all that. Uh, because you've not experienced it. By the time you will experience it, you will change the scripture you are quoting. By the time you experience it, you will change your own mentality. They will have pressed the recent button in your head. And you start quoting the right scriptures. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, so many of you don't understand. They don't understand. When we see divorces, it's not that they pray to be divorces. They, they, they're going through a lot. They, they, they've gone through, and they're still going through. You know, so many of them, you see them when they come out, and, and their, wedding, their daughter's wedding, their son's graduation and stuff, and they're dancing like a crazy person. Uh, you would think that they are crazy for real. But, but they are only looking at it like, whoa, if, God, if, if not for God, I won't be here today. If not for God, I won't be standing right here. All right? I won't be. If you have not been into their shoes before, stop judging them. If you are not living their world before, stop judging them. Don't point a few accusing finger towards them. Nobody is begging you to marry them. You don't have to marry the single mothers. All right? You can stay where you are. Go and find your own wife to marry. But when you pointing accusing finger or pointing a kind of finger towards the single mothers, I'm telling you, hell is really waiting for you. You are going to be condemned by God. Because they are human beings just like yourself. But they've gone through situations in their lives. They, they, they enter into this particular status not because they wanted to uh, enter into it. You know? but, but I think you should be the one loving them. You should be the one protecting them. You should be the one praying for them, for them to continue to stand and to become, uh, to stand and be there for their kids. You know, I celebrate them. I, I really celebrate them for real. That they've gone through so much and they're still standing today is by the grace of God. Now, 
I want to shock you. If not that God is with them, they won't be where they are. So, God loves the single mothers. If you don't love them, God loves them. And he's still, and he's still in love with them. And he will reestablish them either you like it or not. You can continue to preach your stupid doctrines. You can continue to preach whatever you are preaching in your churches. You can continue to, you know, to, 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 to talk down on them. You can continue to point towards them. You can continue to send them to the back of the church and say they are not good enough. You can continue to tell them they cannot be ushers. You can continue to tell them they cannot be in the choir. Oh, they can't be pastors. They cannot do this. They cannot do that. Continue to do that. But Jesus Christ is with them. All right? Jesus loved them so much. He came to this world because of them. And it's still there for their lives today. And God is going to use them. Either you like it, you don't like it. They will preach the gospel. Either you like it, you don't like it. They will carry the mantle and they will heal the sick and they will preach the gospel and they will deliver people. They will advise other people. They will set people free. Let me tell you something. They will become teachers because God has created a ministry for them. And one thing I want you to know is this. Listen, when you enter into the start of the single mother, suddenly you become intelligent. Suddenly you become very, very knowledgeable. Suddenly you become very educated. Very educated. Because you are passing through the school of life. They have gone through the school of life. Many of them are PhDs in knowledge. All right? PhDs in knowledge of what they've been through in their lives. These are people that we're supposed to call and say, come and sit down here. Come and educate our children. These are people we're supposed to say, sit down here. Come and educate our wives. You know, tell them what you have gone through in life. Tell them how to avoid this. Tell them how to take care of this. Tell them how to get ready for this. Okay, they are well educated. They are very knowledgeable. We are very smart by now. I'm telling you, they have gone through the school of life. These are not people that we're supposed to push aside. These are people that we're supposed to celebrate and put right on the spotlight and let them be the one talking and giving examples and using their own lives to minister to the young generation to come. I'm telling you, we're supposed to be celebrating them daily, every day. So many single mothers have died. Many of them are wrong crazy because the, uh, the, the whole pressure is actually too much on them. The pressure is just too much on them. Too much uh, on them. And, uh, you know, so many of them, they are not able to bear it. When they stand in church to talk to people, people take their husbands away from them. Uh, they don't want, people don't want to be their friend because when they see them in church, they see them to be the demons in church. Uh, this young man, it's not wrong. Probably she got single mother is a demon from church. From somewhere. You know, where they were actually talking about single mothers. All right? Maybe that's where they, right? that's where they got it from. Uh, the, the woman that sat beside Christ all through his ministry. That woman who sat beside Christ all through his ministry on her. She was a prostitute. A prostitute. Jesus Christ loved the sinner. He doesn't love the sin. To be a single mother is not a sin or a, it's a situation and it's a life. Christ is still in love with you. All right? So I, I don't see any difference. There are so many married people that are actually single mothers. They are married, but they are in the home that they are single mothers. They are hiding there because of what the church will say. Uh, what will the church say? Oh, how, how are we supposed to uh, tell the church now? Oh, what are we going to say to the church? Oh, what will we say to the church now? So why don't I just stay in this particular relationship? Or oh, I will remain in this relationship oh, until, well, you know, I don't know. And then they remain in the relationship until they die. And then we we'll just hear that they just passed away. They just died for no reason at all. All right? And so many marriages are together physically today, not because, not because, um, not because they, they are still in love, the, the man is gone. The man is gone. The man is, is gone. Spiritually, he's gone. Physically, the guy is still there, not because they are still connected. They, they stopped having sex like about 10 years ago. And the man stopped, stopped being intimate with his wife for 10 years ago. They don't do anything in, in, together in the house. They, they sleep in separate rooms. They are just only roommates and you know flatmates. That's all they do. But when they come to church because the husband is a deacon and the wife is a deaconess, they let us hide. Let us hide this thing. I will manage to sit beside you. 
But when we get to the car, we just look at the coin. And we just live together because of children. And let's just keep it going. Let's talk. You know, people will not talk about those ones. It is all the ones that are actually being real. The ones that have the God to move on in life. They have the God to be separated from their husband and go to be alive. You see, those ones that are still inside of that house that are pretending to still be married. You see, the kind of depression they are passing through that is eating them like cancer. They are not happy at all. They are just living inside of a home and they are just there. There is no way you can be happy. And you think the children don't notice that stuff. They know. The children, they know. And you think the church don't even know. The church, they know about this whole stuff. But you are just hiding behind the finger. And that is not the best for your life. You know, so many people attending churches and uh, they, they go there because they want to be pastor. They lie about their marital, that marriage, that marital status and all kinds of stuff. All because of church type 2. The church type 2 that cannot take you to heaven. Church type 2 that cannot deliver you. You, you just because of church type 2, you ruin your own life. You ruin your own life because of church. Mm, I don't understand. All right? So, 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 so that's the issue right there. But single mothers are single today. Everybody could hear it. We know they're single. They walk all around with their kids. They drag their kids all around the street. They jump into a car. They drive this one to this one. They will, they will be the one to go to football game. They'll be the one to go to wrestling game. They'll be the one to take the daughter to basketball game. Then they take them to school. They drag them to church. They go to this. They go to all that. And they still go to seminar. And at the same time, I'm not going to lie to you. Those women still go to school. They still manage to go to school. I don't know how they do it. You know, I don't know how they're doing this stuff. They have two, three kids and they're all by themselves. There's no help for nobody. And, and they drag their kids everywhere. They carry them to everywhere. They got to carry them to. At the end of the whole stuff, they still go to school. And then they still go do full-time job because nobody's going to give them money. The stupid, crazy men are not paying child support. The men are not paying child support. They run away. They are not working in McDonald's. They go and start living with their parents and some of them will run to Nigeria and stay there forever. And don't come back. All because they don't, don't want to pay child support. And then after the kids are grown and they are actually graduating and getting married, the stupid man will now come from nowhere. I'll be saying, oh, I'm your father. I'm your father after 25 years you've been gone. And when they come back, they come back weak, broke, and sick. And they are still expecting the woman to now start running all around and calling doctors and buying medicine and all kinds of stuff just to get them healed. And stop. I don't buy that kind of stuff. I don't. And, and that's why I think men should borrow themselves brain. I, I, we, we, are, we are talking about single mothers today. Men, I celebrate them, man. Celebrate the single mothers. They, they will run around and do all manners of things inside of this life. Inside of this life. They jump all around when it's convenient, when it's not convenient. They are not allowed to be sick. They are not allowed to be sick. You don't see them. Single mothers, they are not allowed to be sick. You can't see them say, I'm sick. They cannot be sick. House rent won't be paid if they're sick. The children won't be happy if they're sick. They have to take the kids everywhere if they're sick. They can't afford to be sick. You will see them, they just be drinking. They will take Panadol in the morning, take Tanalo in the afternoon. They have to be on their feet because she got to finish school. She got to study. She has to read. She's cooking in the kitchen and reading on the other side. They put a set in their hair. They're actually listening to audio books. They're reading. They can't afford to be sick. They're jumping all around the place. And these are the people that will rubbish. These are people that will rubbish. These are people who will rubbish. You know? You rubbish these people. You say they are not good. You rubbish these people. You say they are not good enough. You rubbish these people. You say they are going to hell. They are demons. You put them at the back seat of a, of, of a church. The church doesn't have, you don't have any ministry for them. They want to remarry, you condemn them. Oh, you have no right to be happy. You have no right to be happy. You have to remain single until you die. It is not the will of God for you to remarry. Then we put them right there for them to be depressed and then they don't have long life. You want them to die young. Oh my God. This is terrible. This is terrible. This is very terrible. I think the church should go back and look back into the Bible and see women in different ways. I see, I see, I, I think the church should go and look at the Bible very well and study and probably seek more of the face of God and for God to talk to them to know that these people are being celebrated in heaven. The Holy Spirit is celebrating, celebrating these single mothers. God Himself is celebrating them. And it's time for us on heart to celebrate them also.
Well, I'm going to open my telephone line for people who would love to call in. Uh, if you would love to call in uh, on the show, I, I will open my telephone line uh, to people who would love to call in. Uh, we are going to be, we're going to expect your your phone your phone call if you feel mm -hmm. like calling in. Our telephone number is plus one four zero five four zero five uh, five five zero five five zero five one one. So. For whosoever would love to call in, you you want to call in uh, on the show uh, to make contribution. Uh, feel free to call on the show at this point in time. Uh, the telephone is open. I know some people will be at work right now. Some people will be on their way going to work. Uh, some people are actually doing one thing or the other. But if you have anyone who would love to call in, uh, to just uh, say one thing or the other as per what I've said, please, you know, uh, go ahead and do this. And you you cannot continue to. Uh, uh, be in the same, in this same, I mean, uh, 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 we can't continue to preach this same message over and over again and again uh, and, and keep on putting all of these women into difficult situations, you know, trying to make them to look like they are demons. They are not. They are being celebrated everywhere. And, and if they are able to still take care of two kids, one kid, and they are able to pass their exam, graduate in school, and they are able to become somebody in life, they need to be celebrated. They deserved it. They deserved to be celebrated. All right? So for you people out there referring to single mothers as demons, you are telling them they are not good enough, stop advertising them, they are, not, they are crazy people, I think you need to have a change of mindset, have a change of attitude, change of understanding. Go and change your orientation around. Uh, you are wrong your approach towards these people. Some of them may be bad before, but God has changed them today. Uh, telephone number 405-550-5135. Let's pick this call. Hello? This is Healthcare Specialist Company. Oh, that's not that's not for us. The telephone number for us is plus 1405-550-5135. If we have anybody that is actually willing to call in, if not, uh, let me just go ahead and just put this video back on. Uh, this video, uh, this movie is coming. It's coming uh, live uh, on Thursday. That's going to be tomorrow. Uh, the movie is launching tomorrow by the grace of God, and you all will be able to see it. And it's coming on social media also. It's going to be coming on YouTube uh, by the grace of God. Uh, you will be able to enjoy it. So look out for this movie. Look out for this movie. It's coming on uh, by the grace of God. And if you are there, you want to advertise your church, you want to advertise your music, you want to advertise your uh, 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 event, feel free to connect with me. Uh, we will definitely uh, do something about that for you by the grace of God. Uh, and then before I go on the show today, I want to quickly uh, let you know that the ticket, our ticket, we only have... Uh, we only have a few tickets left, about 15 tickets left right now for our Canada uh, relationship party. Canada relationship party, we have only 15 tickets left. So for those who are in Canada, in Toronto, Canada, uh, you want to be part of it. You want to be part of this event. You have just only 15 tickets left. Hurry up right now and go get your ticket. The ticket is going, 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 going. It's about to be gone. Uh, we have room. We have room for just only 100 people. We have room for just only 100 people. And we have only 15 tickets left right this moment. So hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Go and get your ticket. And then we're going to be closing it. And the event is coming on the 18th of this month. 18th of this month is a Saturday night. We're going to be rocking and rolling. It's not going to be a church event. It's going to be a party. We talk about a party. We're going to be dancing. We're going to be having fun. And you're going to be asking Pastor Shola questions, man. On that day, you don't call me Pastor Shola. I am Shola Adiwi, the lion himself. So we're going to be there to have some fun. On the 18th of January, 18th of January, 2020, by the grace of God, starting from 6 o'clock all the way to 10 o'clock at night, we are going to be having so much fun by God's grace. And uh, if you live in New York City, you live in New York City, you live in Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, uh, Staten Island, can actually feel free to come over and visit our church, the Lighthouse Christian Outreach Center in Brooklyn, New York. The address is 361 New Lot Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. So feel free to be a 
uh, 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 visit us at our church this coming Sunday and come over there and come and be blessed by the grace of God. So have a beautiful day by the grace of God. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your week. Uh, enjoy today being a Wednesday. The Lord God Almighty will continue to be with you. I want you guys to continue to pray for me. Pray with me because we are dealing with that case right now as per the prophet that slept with that woman who got that woman pregnant and then the husband died. All right. We are not actually going to be looking at it the way we are looking at it. We are going to look at it with the very serious eyes. And we are going to deal with it. And the Lord God Almighty will help us to deal with it in Jesus' name. Today I'm going to be speaking to the uh, the Uluria B of that family. So please pray with me for me to um, enjoy favor uh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Uh, and enjoy your beautiful day. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, one thing we accept is Thank you, sister. One thing that we desire, we desire. And that we worship you We worship you Not come and change our lives One thing we accept is One thing that we desire And that we worship you We worship you